on today's show. October the 24th, that was a Wednesday. I danced that morning, left that night to go to Bible study, left Bible study to go back to the club to work. And while I was sitting in the car, I just was like, I can't do this. I, I just can't do this. And from that point on, I've never looked back. I believe at that moment, he became real to me. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Lori Hartshorn. And I'm Brian Warren. And I am so excited that you've joined us today. Absolutely. Today we're going to see two incredible stories of men and women who defied the odds by making something of their lives despite an extremely traumatic upbringing for each. Yeah, and that's the operative word, despite. Mm -hmm. Now, if you or someone you know is still dealing with the baggage left over from childhood, then this show will be absolutely great hope that God is there always and the opportunity to find freedom and finish well is right at their fingertips. That's right. What is your way that you overcome things from your past? Don't dwell on it. Mm. I mean, you yeah. know, again, for professional yeah. athletics, one of the things yeah. that I always have to remember is the next play is coming. And right. if you don't focus on the next play and you're always looking in the rearview mirror, what ends up happening is you get blindsided yeah. and you just keep getting yeah. hit because, you know, life has a matter, uh, it, it's, it just keeps coming. Yeah. So if you keep looking over your shoulder and counting your change and thinking that somebody, because you're in a pity party, is going to just stop and say, you know what, oh, okay, yeah. let's just go back for them it doesn't happen that way so I've learned that many times what you have to do even if it feels like it hurts you got to move yeah. on I agree Brian for me it's looking straight ahead mm -hmm. you know what I mean and not going back to the land of regret yes or the shame or what if or the if onlys like yeah. we can just get ourselves into a cycle of as you say pity really yes and it is about looking ahead and what helps me look ahead it's one day at a time yes. being grateful i have found that gratitude is the best attitude for being able to move forward and yeah. to be releasing whatever is behind me or even around me and you know one of the things that i i do with that i always grieve it to leave it, right? Yeah, and I and I, I allow that moment to motivate me, not necessarily to confine me. And yeah. one of the most important things that I find with that is if I stand on the promises of the Word of God yeah. and I can connect with something eternal, mm -hmm. it allows my temporal literally to line up with the yeah. will of God. And therefore, what it does do is I don't know the end, but I do know the next step. Yeah, that's and if good. I focus on the next step, I can move to the next step and the next step. Beautiful. So today, as you're about to witness, there is nothing we can't overcome especially with God on our side. Especially with God on our side. So let's get started with Chris, whose life went off the rails as early as she can remember. And this is how she discovered that rock bottom isn't as bad as it sounds. Let's watch. <laughs> when dad got drunk, dad got scary. You know, but as a little girl, I always just wanted my daddy so much. Chris McCloskey's parents divorced when she was five, and her mother, who was a Christian, was given full custody. But her father's behavior continued to influence her. I remember him always being really inappropriate, very sexualized talk in, in front of me whenever I was a little girl. Then when she was 13, her father's drunken sexual talk escalated. It never went all the way to um, take my virginity but it was definitely physical. Her father molested her for three years. Chris was too embarrassed to tell her mother. Instead, she started drinking and doing drugs and seeking out attention from boys in the only way she knew how. I thought my worth and my value was in my sex. You know, and that's how you get attention, that's how you get approval, that's how you get love, because that's what I'd been taught. Chris was already addicted to drugs and alcohol when she left home at 17 to join the Air Force. She stopped using in the military, but once honorably discharged, she tried meth for the first time. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I finally found the thing that I've been looking for my whole life, you know, the euphoria. Just, 
everything was heightened and, you know, it's like, this is great. She was instantly hooked and began using every day. And I would try to go a day without meth, what I would describe it as this fingernail that would just dig at the back of my brain and it would make me obsess. And I would just be like, you know, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Increasingly crippled by the memory of her father's abuse, Chris reached out to him for some sort of resolution. I wrote him this letter. Tell me you're sorry and that's all I need and we'll have a friendship and we'll have a relationship and everything. And he wrote me back this letter that said, no apologies, no regrets. And that, that was, that was a breaking point for me. And I got really serious about my drug addiction after that. Always so much wanting something from someone who didn't have it to give. Chris was a functional addict, able to work as a bartender and even attend college. But she was always fearful of running out of meth and made a deal with her supplier. She would hand over her college aid money if he would front her the drugs. There's this knock at my door, and I open the door, and there's what looked like a SWAT team. And they're, they ask me my name, and they're pulling me out of the door, and they're zip-tying my hands behind me and telling me that I'm under arrest for conspiracy to traffic and distribute over 500 grams of methamphetamine. I had maybe tops, a half gram in my house, tops. And so I'm like, this is crazy. The DEA had tapped her supplier's phone and mistakenly tagged Chris as an investor in his business. Chris was arrested along with 25 other dealers and charged with a federal offense. We went before the federal judge and just carte blanche, she said none of us were getting released. And by this time the fingernail had started, so I'm starting to withdraw. Chris became desperate as her craving for meth intensified, confessing to another inmate that she felt she was in hell. She looked at me and she goes, you think this is bad? Wait till you see the real hell. And that's all she said. And that's all it took. And it's like all of those years of my mom talking to me about Jesus. I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I've got to reach out to Jesus. So I went into my cell and I remember getting on my knees and asking Jesus to um, forgive me and come into my heart. Because I don't know where I would have ended up had that not happened, but it wouldn't have been good or even to be that empty for another second. Chris gave her life to Christ that day, and she was given something in return. I stopped craving drugs, and I never felt it again. That I realized that that was a moment he'd, he'd healed me. You know, he'd healed me from an addiction that had spanned my entire life. It was just suddenly lifted and gone. Chris's charge was eventually reduced to one count of drug trafficking, and she was sentenced to a year in federal prison. She continued to grow in her faith and study the Bible, and she was finally able to forgive her father. That's where I gained the freedom in Christ, you know, where he really set me free. And I see my dad for what he truly was, and that was just a broken, hurting person who in himself needed the love of his heavenly daddy to fix him. You know, and I think now that that was a lifelong quest that, um, has finally been sated inside of me because of, you know, my heavenly daddy. Today she is married and serves as director of a counseling ministry in Illinois. And as a child of God, she sees herself in a whole new light. One of the things that I've learned from God is that I'm a treasure. You know, I'm, I'm special, we all are. And that, you know, our worth and value was set by what Christ did on the cross. So I'm, to him, I'm worth everything. Yeah, to him, I am everything. That's right, Chris. And uh, I wonder if you know that. You know, so many times we get from our parents our identity and how we perceive ourselves and how we believe everyone else perceives us as well. And, uh, no child should have to go through that, what Chris went through. And as a result of that, 
that literally began to take a downward slope of her going into one more poor decision. You know, I believe that sting operation was probably the best thing that happened to her because behind those bars, when she began to cry out to God, then he showed up, and he showed up as not only an everlasting father, as it says in Isaiah 9 and 6, but it's also a prince of peace. And, you know, you don't have to kiss a thousand frogs to get to the prince, literally the prince of peace. When you ask him, ooh, I felt that, come into your heart, he can literally turn your situation around. I want to pray with you because I believe that God wants to set you free. This is what the Bible said. Jesus came to set the captives free and whom the Son makes free, not sets free. Because if you're set free, you could go back in. The Son makes free. He destroys the locks and the prison is free indeed. Are you ready for that freedom? You ready to do some work with God? Let's call on the Prince of Peace. If you need that peace, that's shalom. That's peace emotionally, spiritually, and also physically. one 855 700 But pray this prayer with me. I believe today peace comes into your heart. Jesus, I don't want to run any longer. I confess I need you. Please come into my heart. Make me your child. I give you my personal permission for your heavenly intervention. In Jesus' name. And Father, that person that has prayed, I pray now that you would destroy the works of darkness and the chains that have been binding them. And I ask that even as they call the number on this screen, Lord, as your word declares, whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Let your shalom be released now. I receive it on their behalf in Jesus' name. Call the number on the screen. Up next, it must have been a bad, it must have been bad for Yakania to pray that God would take her mother away. See why when we return. We'll be right back. In the home, we would witness my mother on drugs. Friends would come over. Uh, we would witness them with the pipes, different men spending the night over at the house. Growing up in the projects, Yakinia had nothing, and that's the only life she knew. I remember one time, we went. my mom went to cook bread, and when she cooked the bread, there were roaches throughout the bread. So we had to pick the roaches out of the bread in order to eat the bread, just, just because that's all we had to eat. Because um, we grew up with no food in the refrigerator, um, really no clothes to wear. I remember having to wear her clothes and like roll up the dress, the skirt, and kids taunted us because my mom was on drugs. So I spent my childhood pretty much fighting Though she was still just a child, Yakinia tried to fend for herself, but she was powerless against the violence that surrounded her. When she was nine years old, she was raped. It made me hard, it made me angry, um, but I, would not, I wouldn't talk about it. I just try not to register it. Then I don't have to deal with the pain. Yakinia dreamed of seeing her mom drug free. She asked God for help. Dear God, can you please just take us away? I, I don't know how that came about because we never went to church. Um, I used to pray to, to God, a God that I really didn't know, and I used to ask him uh, if he would take us away from my mom uh, because I figured that if he would take her away, she would get off drugs. Yakinia says her prayer was answered. She was removed from her home and lived in a children's shelter for several years. She was in high school when her mother got clean from drugs. She moved back in but soon learned some things hadn't changed. My mother would not come to any of the, the my games, but then waiting on her after school and taking hours to pick me up. And so, you know, just little things like that that added to the rejection and the disappointment. Yakinia started looking for love elsewhere and became pregnant at 17 years old. She graduated high school and started college. 
She was looking for ways to pay for school and provide for her son. That's when a friend introduced her to exotic dancing. It's amazing because although I despise what I did, I was driven by money. And so I would despise going into the club. I would despise going into the shows, despise being in front of those men. But after I counted the money at the end of the night, I, it motivated me to do it again. She quit school and spent nights dancing in strip clubs and private parties. Yakinia also dated drug dealers who would give her an allowance, sometimes thousands of dollars a week. Your own place, your own townhouse, multiple cars, multiple bank accounts, with thousands of dollars in it, shopping. It's just all about the money. If you cannot pay a bill or you cannot support me, then I cannot be with you. You know, so I was just really hard, really cold. Over the years, she maintained a friendship with her son's father and his wife. One day, the couple invited her to church. So I said, okay, I'll go to church. I was still dancing. So I started going to church and I liked the church. And I said, okay, well, I'm gonna go to church and I leave church and I dance. And that's what I did for two years. Um, I didn't stop dancing, although I felt guilty every time I went to church. I didn't stop dancing because of the lifestyle. But I didn't want to stop going to church because I felt like I was getting fed. And so that, that started something. One day, Yakinia's pastor pulled her aside. He said, what type of work do you do? And I said, well, pastor, I'd rather not say, because I was so embarrassed. And he said, well, the Spirit of God already showed me what you do. So I'm asking you to pray and ask God to give you the strength to leave that lifestyle. And I was like, OK. And so when I left from him, I was like, God, I don't know how you're going to do this when I'm used to making this type of money, you know. And so from that moment on, I began to pray about leaving that lifestyle. Then Yakinia started having visions when she was on stage. It looked dark. It looked like I died and my eternal destiny was hell. It was dark, it was dim, it was scary. Um, I felt like God was trying to talk to me. I, I felt like he was trying to warn me. And I felt like he was basically saying, if you don't leave this lifestyle, you're not gonna make it. And I felt like God was trying to save my life. Yakinia thought about her future and where she would spend eternity. The visions weighed heavy on her heart, and she knew it was time to make a decision before it was too late. October the 24th, that was a Wednesday. I danced that morning, left that night to go to Bible study. Left Bible study to go back to the club to work. And while I was sitting in the car, I just was like, I can't do this. I, I just can't do this. And from that point on, I've never looked back. I believe at that moment, he became real to me. It's an amazing feeling. It's an amazing feeling to know that in spite of everything that I did, that he loves me, Jesus, the Lord loves me right where I am. Today, Yakinia is an empowerment speaker, mentor, and author. She says God's unconditional love transformed her life. God loves you right where you are. You don't have to wait until you stop drugs or wait until you stop dancing or wait until you get everything right, but know that the Lord Jesus loves you right where you are right now. That's amazing. That's an amazing feeling. It's priceless. You can't put a dollar sign to that. You know, it always breaks my heart when I see a child that's been in a terrible situation of abuse and an unhealthy environment. But you know what's so beautiful about Yakania's response is in her pain, she prays. I mean, she didn't even have anyone teaching her or telling her, but she prayed and reached out to God. You know, as she struggled with her pain in her life, we do see, and she said that she she used denial to kind of push things down. And can I just tell you that, you know, denial always leaves us in, in destitute situations. Whenever we go into denial, we're just actually not allowing God to heal us. And God's okay with your pain. He can handle all of your, uh, all the difficult things that have come your way. In fact, one of the ways to move out of denial and into freedom is to invite Jesus into your pain. Have you ever thought of doing that? Just stop and, and ask Jesus to come close to you. And where, what would he want to say to you in your pain of the past? Jesus is good and he will speak truth into your mind about who he is and how much he loves you. In fact, I love what Yakania said herself. So let's listen to her words. She says, God loves you just where you are. 
You don't have to wait until you stop drugs or wait until you stop dancing or wait until you get everything right. But know that the Lord Jesus loves you right where you are right now. That's amazing, she said. It's an amazing feeling. It's priceless. You can't put a dollar sign on that. Isn't that powerful? From a young girl who had such a broken life, for her to be able to tell you that God loves you, that nothing is, is bigger, nothing, nothing needs to even change in your life. Just come to God and receive his love. I want to pray with you if you want to receive the love of God for you so that you can have a new day in your life. Let's pray this prayer together if you're willing. Lord, I give you my pain. I give you the shame, the difficulties, the abuse of my past. Would you come close to me, Jesus? What do you have to say to me? Thank you for your love for me. Thank you that you never left me, that you adore me and you are with me. I receive you. I invite you into my life. Make me a new person in Jesus' name. Amen. Call us at 1-855-759-0700. We want to give you this free resource because we want you to walk in freedom. Well, up next, we'll return with Ask Dr. Mary. As well, your prayer requests a little later in the program. In Miraculous Blessings, Pat Robertson shows you how to open the floodgates of God's awesome blessings in your life. Everyone needs to get Miraculous Blessings. I think any teaching from Pat Robertson is awesome. Discover what the Bible has to say about God's covenant of blessing. Pat does a great job of always pointing us back to Scripture. The laws of blessing. And Miraculous Blessing shows us how we can be put into a place to receive those blessings. And what are the hindrances to the blessings of God? The words of Jesus, they are as valid as the law of gravity. And if we follow those laws, we will be blessed. You'll see amazing true stories of everyday people whose lives were rescued and transformed by God's miraculous blessings. She's not only alive, but she's thriving. And her testimony is one that's going to last for ages. God wants to bless you. You need to watch it. Become a CBN partner and get miraculous blessings today. Hi, 700 Club Canada viewers. The question today is, what are signs that your friendships or relationships are healthy versus unhealthy? That is a great question, as it's one that many Christians struggle with in our desire to love others as God commands us to. And so we too often tolerate relationships that aren't really healthy. But what we don't realize is that we may actually be stopping the growth that the Lord intends in our loved ones' lives. Maybe He's calling us to love with boundaries so that our loved ones can become the best version of themselves that the Lord created them to be. So here are some questions to ask yourself to help you do an honest assessment of the health of your relationships. First of all, how balanced is the power of that relationship? How do you generally feel when you're with that person? And how do you feel about yourself after you've been together? Do you feel energized or do you feel drained? Do you tend to lose your voice when you're with that person? Or alternatively, do you dominate and they don't have a voice with you? Have you noticed that the person's been withdrawing or, or avoiding you? And here's a good one. What are some of the personal costs you're bearing to stay in a relationship that you know is toxic? What bad behaviors are you tolerating? Or alternatively, what behaviors do you know they're putting up with from you? Here's a really good one. Have your friends and family been expressing any concerns about any of your relationships? And do you find yourself working harder than the other person to maintain a relationship? Now, you may be feeling some growing realization about some of the health of your relationships as you listen to my questions. Taking the time to do an honest assessment will help motivate you to make some healthy changes to your relationships. Now, there are more ways to connect with the 700 Club Canada online. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash 700 Club Canada. Find us on Instagram at 700 Club Canada. Or follow us on Twitter at 700 Club Canada. Just email cba at 700club.ca or visit us at 700club.ca.
Because of your faithful partnership, you are helping us support the Union Gospel Mission. This ministry transforms communities by overcoming poverty, homelessness, and addiction, one life at a time. It's amazing what we can do when we partner together. Join us for just $20 a month as a 700 Club Canada partner. Call today, 855-759-0700. Together, we are changing lives and giving hope. What a powerful testimony of what God is doing. The Union Gospel Mission, yeah. I really appreciate the work that they're doing in Vancouver. And after being a BC Lion, that's one of my favorite <laughs> places as well. So, I bet it is, you know, uh, that's one of our partner ministries. And we really appreciate your partnership because it allows us to help the Union Gospel Mission. And this year, Gifts of Hope Christmas program, we're helping to sponsor that as well. So your dollars are going to that, that uh, wonderful gift of hope. Would you uh, stretch arms and, and link arms with us and become a partner with the 700 Club Canada? For just $20 a month, we would love to get this into your hands because we believe the work is so important here that we need partnership like yours to make it happen. And uh, this talks about the miraculous blessings of God, what can block the blessings, but also how to move into the blessing of Abraham, whom God blessed in all things. That's it would be right. such an encouragement yeah. if you'd call. Give us a call, 1-855-759-0700. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's tough raising kids, isn't it, Brian? It and can I, be in this generation. Yeah, and I know as a mom that one of the things that plagues moms and for moms watching, there's days where you just think you're a bad mom. Mm. And you know, I just want to pray for moms yeah. because I feel like uh, there's such a weight and a burden on being a mom. Not that dads don't carry the same yeah. burden, yeah. but a lot of moms just... You know, they have the bad mom syndrome, I call it. Well, we they feel get a guilty. Lot of... They feel, you know, they can't, aren't good enough. And, yeah. and one of the things that we've been receiving a lot of at our, our prayer partners is really moms praying for yes, their children. That's right. So I think that's important that it we is. pray. Why don't it you is. lead us in that? Absolutely. Well, Father, I want to pray for moms today. Uh, you love moms, and I want to pray for strength for them. I want them, I, I just pray against guilt and shame in Jesus' name, in Jesus that they name. would know that in your strength, in your power, they can be full of love and mercy and grace for their children, even in those crazy times. But Jesus, I ask that you would overwhelm moms with your love yeah. so that they would be so full of your love, so full of your grace that it would overflow to their children. Amen. I just pray that you would encourage moms today in Jesus' name. And be a fence around them, Lord. Protect them that they would be able to raise up and become the intercessor, the mama bear yeah. that would declare in this generation, you can't That's have right. my child. That's right. Let them see what they're praying for mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we believe that God heard that prayer and we thank you every time that we get an opportunity to come into your home. Until next time, God bless. Keep praying. <laughs>